You hear me? You go to hell. You go to hell and you die. South Park is one of the longest running animated shows, having run for decades and constantly adapting to and ridiculing the times. Not only has the town itself changed, but many of the characters have undergone a lot of development since the show's inception. With that in mind, if we go back to the show's origin and look at its initial episodes in isolation, which characters come across as the most moral and which are the most detestable. Hey guys, I'm Brad with Wicked Bench, and this is South Park Season 1 Characters, Good to Evil. That's good, Billy. A little higher now. Our only rule is that we'll be sticking to the official 13 episodes aired at South Park's first season. So this doesn't count the unaired pilot and the Spirit of Christmas specials. We'll be starting with the most noble character and working our way down to the most evil. These characters are the good. The gold medal of good easily goes to Big Gay Al. In general, Big Gay Al is considered to be one of the most moral characters in South Park, and his role in the first season is no exception. Here, Big Al runs an animal sanctuary for homosexual animals who have been outcast by society. When Stan's gay dog, Sparky, played by George Clooney, is being put through gay conversion therapy at the request of Mr. Garrison, he runs away to the mountains and finds shelter with Big Gay Al. When Stan finds Sparky at the sanctuary, Big Gay Al takes him on a boat ride and teaches him to accept his dog the way he is. Isn't this precious? For a show that was considered to be as shocking as South Park was initially, this episode and character were one of the early signs that there was definitely heart beneath the crudeness. Big Gay Al deserves the gold medal for just being so super. The silver medal of good goes to Jesus Christ. Throughout the first season, Jesus runs a talk show in South Park called Jesus and Pals, wherein he accepts calls from his viewers asking for guidance. Jesus' advice tends to be much more sensible than the other adults in South Park, and he does genuinely care about his followers, even if they may have warped interpretations of what he's saying. How the hell did you know that? Well, maybe because I'm the son of God, Brainiac. Jesus also never backs down, even when the odds are against him, demonstrated best when he agrees to box Satan, despite being at a huge physical disadvantage. Even though every member in town bets against him, aside from Satan, who throws the fight, Jesus still trains really hard and gets into the ring to face off against the ultimate icon of evil. The bronze medal of good goes to Mr. Hanky, the Christmas Pooh. When Kyle is feeling left out of Christmas activities due to being Jewish, Mr. Hanky comes to cheer him up. Despite being a Christmas Pooh, Mr. Hanky spreads joy to all folks, regardless of their religion, so long as they believe in his existence. <laughs> Granted, this gets Kyle into trouble, initially, as everyone thinks he's the one smearing poop stains everywhere, but this was all so he can prove his existence to the other South Park residents. Mr. Hankey's only minor flaw is attacking Cartman whenever he sings a song about Kyle's mom, but we're not gonna act like Cartman didn't deserve that on some level. Next, we have Starvin' Marvin. Starvin' Marvin is an Ethiopian boy who's shipped to stand by mistake. After the boys attempt to get a wristwatch for sponsoring a starving child, while Starvin' Marvin doesn't speak English, he learns to get along well with other children eventually picking up English phrases like sweet along the way. Secret agents do eventually figure out the mistake and attempt to return Starvin Marvin, only for Marvin to trick them into taking Cartman back. This could be seen as Starvin Marvin's only bad act if, you know, it wasn't being done to Cartman. Regardless, Starvin Marvin does eventually volunteer to go back to Ethiopia, so long as he can bring the onslaught of dead turkeys to feed his family upon returning. Moving on to Miss Ellen. Miss Ellen becomes a third grade substitute when Mr. Garrison goes out for a nose job. Upon entering the classroom, Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny are immediately enamored with Miss Ellen and try various different methods of winning her over. While these all fail, Miss Ellen is very respectful toward the children's affection and politely thanks them. Also, even though Wendy becomes jealous and curses her out, Miss Ellen is very forgiving and hopes they can become friends. On top of her friendly demeanor, Miss Ellen is a much more responsible teacher than Mr. Garrison and actively tries to teach the students something useful. Her only issue is that she can sometimes unintentionally lead men on, such as when she accepts Chef's dinner date or reveals whoever scores highest on a spelling test gets to have dinner with her. Despite that fault, Miss Allen deserved better than their cruel demise. Next is the guidance counselor, Mr. Mackey. Mr. Mackey is one of the most moral staff members at the school, who always tries to give the children the best advice possible. Even so, Mr. Mackey's advice, at least as far as this first season is concerned, leaves a lot to be desired. He has Kyle committed upon believing him to be a clinically depressed fecophiliac. Yeah, okay. 
which turns out to be not true, but Mr. Hanky turns out to be real. He tells Damien that he should be passive when the other kids bully him, which is the same advice he gave to Pip that turned out disastrously. He also convinces Stan, Kyle, and Kenny to secretly videotape Cartman's tea party, which was a bad idea even if it was supposed to be for research. Even during these incidents, it's obvious Mr. Mackey has the best intentions in mind, even if he could have given better guidance or made better choices. Next is Randy Marsh. While Randy is a fan favorite today, this is mostly due to his development and eventual focus in later seasons. The early season appearances of Randy portray him as much more mature and responsible, as opposed to his current counterpart. This is best demonstrated when Randy warns the town about an erupting volcano, which is possibly the most noble act he's done throughout the series. He also comforts Stan and Kyle upon learning Kenny was killed by a train, despite the fact they obviously haven't thought about the incident one bit. Even with these acts of kindness, Randy can sometimes be oblivious, such as when he writes of Grandpa Marsh as being silly for constantly trying to kill himself. Pip is next. Next, a transfer student from England, Pip maintains a positive attitude. Despite being made fun of by everyone on a constant basis, he's shown to be very passive towards the abuse he receives, which further cemented him as an outcast among his class. Munchy, munchies, hmm? When Damien is a new kid in school, all the other third graders mock him, with Pip being the only one to befriend him. This is very noble by Pip, even though it literally blows up in his face when Damien realizes torturing Pip would make him popular as well. Sorry, Pip, but everyone agrees you suck. Now, we have easily one of the most popular characters in the series, Chef. Chef is more mature and understanding than many adults, which is probably why the kids have more respect for him than others. He's open-minded towards aliens and those with alternative lifestyles, and even gets everyone to believe in Mr. Hanky when they deem Kyle as crazy. He also rallies up the townsfolk in order to fight back against the deadly turkeys, showing Chef has the moral compass of William Wallace at times. Chef is a respectable adult, even though he sometimes teaches the kids about things not appropriate for their age. Just get them to make sweet love. Almost all of his songs eventually turn into him singing about making love to women, whether or not that was related to the original topic. Now we have Kenny McCormick. Kenny is often seen as one of the most moral children in South Park, but we have to remember that a lot of that development started in subsequent seasons. In these early episodes, Kenny's heroism is downplayed in place of his highly vulgar nature. While all four boys are portrayed as extremely vulgar, Kenny is explicit in both his language and knowledge of sexual topics. Kenny also chimes in a lot more with insults, particularly mocking Carl Cartman's mom for being, uh, promiscuous. Even so, Kenny is portrayed to have a sweeter side and will often put himself in danger for the sake of others. Next is Stan Marsh. Stan is able to garner a lot of sympathy from the audience on many occasions. As stated earlier, Stan, Kyle, and Kenny are at their most vulgar in these early episodes, often ripping on each other as much they do Cartman. We doubt Stan would make fun of Kenny for being poor nowadays, but in these early appearances, he does just that. He's no angel, but Stan often learns a moral by the end of each episode, which shows early signs of his character development. Jeff, is it okay to kill your grandpa? He convinces the town to accept homosexual animals after visiting Big Gay Al's sanctuary, so Stan definitely shows signs of nobility. That being said, there are times where he learns the wrong morals, as demonstrated by him killing Scuzzlebutt after the creature helped him survive the volcano eruption. Next is Kyle Bruflovsky. While Stan is the more sensitive of the two, Kyle has a lot of moments where he elicits sympathy from the audience as well. This includes him feeling left out on Christmas and being deemed as crazy for trying to convince the town of Mr. Hankey's existence. Say something, Mr. Hankey! He, along with Stan, often learns a moral at the end of each episode. Kyle does some things, which would be considered odd for his character to do nowadays, like kicking Ike for following him to school. Even when Ike is abducted by aliens, Kyle seemingly is more concerned about getting into trouble with his parents than the well-being of his own brother. One thing that has stayed the same is that Kyle is the quickest to anger out of the four boys, often berating Cartman more than anyone. He also mocks Kenny for being poor and makes fun of Stan on occasion, such as when Stan dresses up as Raggedy Andy for Halloween. Halloween. Coming up next is Dr. Alphonse Mephesto, a scientist who's known for DNA splicing. Mephesto first appears in an episode where he steals a blood sample from Stan to help his son win the science fair. While this is reprehensible, Dr. Mephesto does learn the error of his ways when this results in a destructive Stan clone that wreaks havoc on South Park. Dr. Mephesto later genetically clones turkeys to provide for families during Thanksgiving. His intent this time was noble, even though the turkeys end up attacking the residents of South Park. Must tell me, have you seen? Seen anything odd lately? 
Finally, Dr. Mephesto agrees to help Cartman find the identity of his father, so long as he can pay $3,000 to cover the cost of the experiment. Even though Dr. Mephesto's experiments often go horribly wrong, he does have good intentions, and even when he doesn't, he learns the errors of his ways. He may be crazy and potentially dangerous, but his heart is in the right place. All right, that's it for the good section. Let's dive into more neutral territory. These characters fall in the gray. We start out the category with Officer Bar Brady. Officer Bar Brady is often called on for help by the other South Park citizens whenever things start to get out of hand. The problem is that Officer Bar Brady is so dumb that he's usually of no help at all, often being useless at best and counterproductive at worst. Mm, that's a good cookie! He kills Kenny while perusing cows and gives misinformation about the law, telling Kyle that it's illegal for Jewish people to eat Christmas snow. Like, he may be stupid, but his heart is in the right place, usually. Now we have Leanne Cartman. Leanne is someone who has received a lot of development in the most recent seasons of South Park, but her origins are rocky to say the least. Here, Leanne is portrayed as highly friendly and passive, which would not be the worst trait if her actions didn't constantly enable Cartman to be as spoiled as he is. Leanne always gives Cartman whatever he desires, despite the fact that he berates her at every turn. She even brushes off Eric's extremely aggressive comments, such as him calling Kyle's mom anti-Semitic names. There are even times where Eric recites racist beliefs he claims to have learned from his mother, implying she may not be as sweet as she seems. Leanne is promiscuous and is known to have slept with practically every man in South Park, a reputation that Cartman is often roasted heavily for. Moving on to Jimbo Kern and Ned Gerblansky. Ned and Jimbo are notable for having a huge passion for firearms, Arms, which they use for their business, recreation, and defense. In terms of defense, this ain't a problem, as Jimbo and Ned use guns to protect the town from various threats, such as mutant turkeys and zombies. The only problem is sometimes they claim self-defense as an excuse for recreation. Jimbo, look. Best demonstrated by Jimbo yelling, they're coming right for us, in order to skirt around hunting laws. Their business acumen is questionable, as Jimbo sells Mr. Garrison a gun, despite the fact he's obviously gonna use the weapon to kill Kathy Lee Gifford. Jimbo has a strained relationship with his nephew, Stan, who refuses to kill any animals, despite the fact Stan is too young to be hunting in the first place. Rounding out the category is Damien Thorne. Being from the seventh layer of hell, Damien has supernatural powers, which he mostly used for evil in the past. Upon transferring to South Park Elementary, he causes destruction and turns Kenny into a duck-billed platypus for mocking him. Damien seeks counseling and befriends Pip after being outcasted by his classmates. He eventually learns he can gain the respect of everyone if he picks on Pip as well, causing him to blow Pip up in the sky at Cartman's birthday party. This certainly isn't the most moral action, but Pip seems to have enjoyed it, so no harm done. That's it for the gray area, so let's get to the worst of the worst. These are the bad and evil characters. Starting out the category is Miss Crabtree. Miss Crabtree is an angry and mentally unstable woman who often screeches at the children to get on the school bus as well as to sit down and shut up. While not the focus of any episodes in season one, Miss Crabtree does make an impression. What did you say? being constantly berated by Stan, Kyle, Cartman, and Kenny. Thankfully for them, Miss Crabtree seems to have bad hearing, and the boys reword almost every sentence full of insults they throw at her. Even when Stan, Kyle, and Kenny don't hide their insults in the season finale, Miss Crabtree shrugs and drives away, proving she may not be as aggressive as she portrays herself to be. Next is Sheila Bruflovsky. Sheila is a very strict and no-nonsense parent, but unfortunately, she represents the other extreme. While Leanne is an enabler, Sheila is so easily riled that she'll often take matters into her own hands, leading them to get out of control. In the episode Death, Sheila rallies the other parents in South Park to protest Terrence and Philip, similarly to her actions in South Park, bigger, longer, and uncut. While this doesn't lead to war like it did in the movie, Sheila does sacrifice actual human lives to do this, such as when she gets protesters to launch themselves at Cartoon Central headquarters. What, what, what? Sheila once again becomes an antagonist in Mr. Hanky the Christmas Pooh, where she shuts down the school play due to her son being of a different religion. This causes problems for many people, particularly Kyle, who's already going through enough stress proving Mr. Hanky's existence to everyone. Sheila does at least have principles that she sticks through, but her extremist actions do cause her to vilify herself more often than not. Now we have Terrence Mephisto. Terrence makes his only speaking appearance in the episode An Elephant Makes Love to a Pig. Here, Terrence is Kyle's rival for the science fair, wanting to create a human clone to come out on top. When he makes a clone of Stan, Dr. Mephesto warns Terrence that it's too dangerous to bring into town, which Terrence ignores. It's very clear that Terrence has little regard for the safety of others and is driven by his arrogance and selfish desires. That's stupid. 
Terrence may not be the most memorable character in South Park, but as far as the first season goes, he ranks firmly in the bad category. Now we have Mayor McDaniels. Mayor McDaniels is an egotistical and selfish woman who uses the town she runs as a means to an end. She has stated several times that she despises South Park and its residents and wants to be recognized by an outside party to promote her to a higher political position. This is shown during her first episode in Weight Gain 4000, where she wants the host Kathy Lee Gifford to drum up attention towards South Park and herself. Any concern she has for the town is purely a facade to portray her as a caring and down-to-earth individual. Camping on that mountain and... Uh, I'm sorry, can I start over? Whenever characters like Chef or Dr. Mephisto try to warn the city about oncoming danger like zombies or mutant turkeys, Mayor McDaniels at best drugs them off and at worst mocks them and insinuates they're crazy. Next is Shelly Marsh, Stan's violent and angry sister. Shelly first appears in this season when Stan reveals he's being beat up at home. While some characters initially have sympathy for Stan, this mostly goes out the window when he reveals he's being beat up by his sister, causing the other characters to mock him. Shelly is taking her frustration out on Stan due to the fact she has to wear braces. Who said that? Shelly sees Stan as a punching bag who she can take out her aggressions on, which has stayed somewhat consistent throughout the entire series. Despite her violent tendencies, Shelly has the occasional random moment of kindness, such as when she covers for Stan when his clone goes around attacking town residents. Even so, when Stan thanks her for this, she immediately goes back to beating him up, thus somewhat diminishing her kind act in the process. Randy's dementia-ridden, wheelchair-bound father, Grandpa Marsh, first appears in the episode Death, where he continually attempts to get Stan to help him with the assisted suicide. Stan asks Chef, Jesus, and Mr. Garrison for advice, all of which tell him they're not touching that one with a 20-foot pole. Since no one will talk to Stan about the issue, he eventually agrees to do it, only for Grandpa Marsh to change his mind upon seeing the spirit of his own grandfather. This convinces Grandpa Marsh to not get Stan involved, but he still plans a trip to Africa to get eaten by lions. Grandpa Marsh appears again in the season finale, where he videotapes Kenny getting hit by a train and wins the top prize on America's stupidest home video. In all cases, Grandpa Marsh is selfish and belligerent, often caring little about the feelings of others. He even calls Stan Billy, which could be attributed to his dementia. Even so, Grandpa Marsh is far from a respectable elder and is a bad influence on everyone around him. Avoiding the bottom three, we have Eric Cartman. The South Park fans may be shocked that Cartman is not taking home the gold, as he's often pointed to as the evilest character in South Park's history. This is true, but in the first season, he is more or less a bratty kid. Even so, Cartman is an absolute absolutely horrible person. He's racist, anti-Semitic, homophobic, a pathological liar, and insulting toward everyone. He mocks Kenny for being poor, Kyle for being Jewish, and Stan for being a whip. He even dresses up as Adolf Hitler for Halloween and is shown to fantasize about spreading his cause, which he later does in season 8. While Stan and Kyle, and Kenny if he's still alive, usually learn a lesson by the end of the episode, Cartman almost always does not. Even if he does, such as when he reflects on his bad treatment of poor people after being sent to Ethiopia, he immediately discards a lesson as soon as he finds an opportunity to return home. The bronze medal of evil goes to Wendy Testaberger. Very early on, Wendy is established as Stan's love interest and eventual girlfriend. Throughout most of season one, Wendy seems to be a mostly moral person who sticks up for what she believes in, such as when she berates Cartman for making fun of poor people or helps Kyle get Ike back from aliens. She does make the occasional mistake, such as when she doesn't dress up as Raggedy Ann for Halloween and neglects to inform Stan, who dresses up as Raggedy Andy. Even so, she does learn the error of her ways in this scenario, so we won't hold that against her. What we will hold against her is her unrestrained jealousy, which is first shown in the episode where she tries to expose Cartman for winning the essay contest unfairly. We think Cartman might have cheated. That turned out to be the tip of the iceberg, as Wendy's jealousy really gets out of hand in the episode Tom's Rhinoplasty. When Stan starts developing feelings for Miss Ellen, Wendy threatens her and tries to undermine her constantly before getting Iraqi soldiers to launch Miss Ellen into the sun. The silver medal of evil goes to Mr. Garrison slash Mr. Hat. The reason we're including Mr. Hat in this ranking is because it's not made clear whether or not the puppet is actually sentient or a figment of Mr. Garrison's imagination. Either way, Mr. Hat acts through Mr. Garrison, who encourages his behavior so we feel it's acceptable to rank them together. Mr. Garrison is a third grade teacher at South Park Elementary who is irresponsible and immoral. He often mocks and insults his own students, even telling Kyle to go to hell and die through Mr. Hat. He tells Stan that homosexuals are evil, even though Chef accurately points out that's a cope for his own closeted homosexuality. What the hell are you talking about? I am not gay! Beyond his homophobia, Mr. Garrison is also incredibly racist, as 
as demonstrated by his request to get rid of all the Mexicans during Christmas. Mr. Garrison and Mr. Hat are at their worst in the episode Weight Gain 4000, where they plan to kill Kathy Lee Gifford due to losing a talent show to her when Mr. Garrison was a child. Whether Mr. Hat is sentient or not here is irrelevant, as Mr. Garrison eventually is on board with the assassination as well. The attempt failed, but the intent was clearly there, and Mr. Garrison accidentally ends up killing Kenny anyway, so we're not about to let him off the hook. We could keep going with more examples, but this is Mr. Garrison we're talking about, so is there really any need? And finally, the gold medal of evil goes to Barbara Streisand. South Park has covered many celebrities over the years, most of which seem to be lighthearted jabs at Hollywood culture. Only a few cases does it seem like Parker and Stone have genuine malice toward these people, but Barbara Streisand is one of those cases. In the episode, Mecca Streisand, the disgruntled celebrity travels to South Park upon finding out Cartman has a triangle of Xinthar. Her reason for doing this is to align it with the triangle of Krula to create the diamond of Pantheos, which will unlock her secret powers and take over the world. After demanding the triangle from Cartman to no avail, she captures the four boys and tortures them with her awful singing voice until Cartman finally gives it up. Combining the two triangles causes Barbara Streisand to transform into the titular Mecha Streisand, a giant robotic kaiju monster based off of Mecha Godzilla. Mecha Streisand stomps around South Park, destroying property and killing many. She's eventually defeated through the combined efforts of Leonard Malton, Sidney Poitier, and Robert Smith, causing Mecha Streisand to be launched into space face and explode. The death and destruction Barbara Streisand caused is more than enough to land her the gold medal.